Come on. All right, I've just spotted three. That is amazing. No, oh, so delicious. All right, tonight is steak night. We have a beautiful, beautiful ribeye on the bone here. Take a look at that thing. That is some serious steak action. This is one of the steaks from the guys at Provenir. It's a completely ethical, regen farmer focused on-site abattoir. So all of the beef that we get for these guys that we run out of the restaurants come from Provenir. And once I tasted this beef, I, I honestly have not gone back. So I called the boys and said, hey, I need a bit of a hero piece to use to do this. And this is the piece that I've been given. This is probably a one kilo steak, so quite enough for all of us. This is one of those recipes where absolutely the produce does the talking. I'm going to be cooking with um, some beef fat or tallow. Uh, that's what I'm going to be frying my beef in. There's obviously going to be some fat that renders out of this steak because it's got lovely marbling and a really nice high fat content. And my job is going to be to get a nice hard crust on that to gently cook the center of the meat to, and we're looking to if i've had a probe here i'd be looking to cook this to about 52 to 53 55 degrees that's going to give me a really beautiful medium rare number it's all in the cook and it's all in the rest this is something that cannot be rushed and when it is rushed you fuck it up so try not to rush it and all i'm going to do now is i'm going to season this heavily on both sides. And give it a lot of cracked pepper. And that is literally it. Everything else that I'm gonna do with this dish tonight is all gonna be in my add-on flavorings. I've got some bone marrow that I'm gonna roast in some hard herbs. I've gone very, very traditional here as far as my flavor profile is concerned. I'm gonna do roasted garlic. I'm gonna do some fresh thyme. I've got a chervil butter that I'll be showing you how to make using softened butter and a little bit of fried garlic. And then I've got a sprig of rosemary that I'm gonna use from these guys. And I'm gonna to top the whole steak with some really finely sliced chives. So, I reckon that's enough talking. Our job here is going to be to give this steak plenty of lubricant to be able to fry and caramelize beautifully within this frying pan. So again, I've gone for these really heavy set frying pans because they just, they hold their heat. They're just an absolutely fantastic product. So do a couple of wedges of your tallow. Just remember that that's going to expand almost twofold when it goes from a solid to a liquid. Another major key factor to take into consideration when cooking the ultimate steak is to make sure that your steak has been left out at room temperature for, I left this out for a couple of hours because I want this warm all the way through to the center. I don't want to have a cold center that I'm working against with a hot frying pan. I want everything to be at an ambient temperature, the temperature that will the room temperature, and they're going to be able to introduce heat from both sides. I'm going to give it a little zip in the oven just to, to see it through, and then we're going to give a long period of time for resting. Our frying pan is looking nice and hot. I can see that we're starting to get a little bit of smoke forming. That means that we're just beyond smoke point. So it's time to introduce our steak. Yeah. I'm gonna sear this on both sides now for about five or six minutes either side but it's totally up to what's going on with my steak. So if, I, if your burner is much more intense than my one here, then you're probably gonna have a little bit of less time on it. What I'm looking for is a hard caramelization. I wanna lock the juices inside of my steak. 
There's two main trains of thoughts with cooking a steak. You can infuse a lot of smoky flavor by cooking them over fire. That's another technique that I absolutely love. Then there's this technique where I'm gonna be cooking it in some animal fat and I'm getting a nice sear and I'm gonna add a huge amount of flavor with all of my accompaniments. Next step is gonna to be to look after our bone marrow. I've gone really classic here. I'm just doing my hard herbs. So I've got some rosemary, and I've got some thyme. I'm just gonna run a knife over both of that. And then I'm just gonna do some slivers of garlic. A good amount of salt and pepper. And I'm also gonna add a little bit more lube to this with some olive oil. It's time to get that into the oven. That's gonna take probably 10 or 12 minutes in here. I'm gonna let my oven preheat up. I've got, I've got that set at 220 at the moment. So I'm gonna really bring that up to temp. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is we're going to make our chervil butter. I've got a couple of tablespoons here of some softened butter, and I'm just gonna bring a strong chervil game to that. What do you use chervil for? Well, it's a it's very traditional flavor. Like, it's a mild herb. Not much. Chervil butter. Uh, it's nice with lobster, to be honest. So I've got some salt in there. I've got some pepper in there. I'm gonna run a little bit of chopped chives as well. Now with your chives, make sure they're nice and fine. And I wanna add a little bit of fried garlic. So, on the edge of my frying pan over there, you'll see that the fat of the steak has started to render quite heavily. So using your microplane, race out your garlic. So my plan here is to have a really beautiful, hard caramelized garlic that comes in with all of these very soft, very aromatic, easy herbs. But I'd like to also bring a little bit of intensity. Great. And while I'm on the grater, I'm just gonna get a heap of fresh citrus. Add that into my butter as well. So from here, things are gonna get pretty serious pretty quickly. It's definitely time to flip that steak. So with our garlic, I'm gonna take that grated garlic and I'm just gonna use a little corner of our frying pan here. It's gonna be a little bit dangerous, but you'll be right. I'm gonna fry that garlic off really quickly and I'm gonna throw it into my butter. So bring your butter up nice and close. This is only gonna take a couple of seconds to do.
smell that. It's just emotional. So as you can see, there's a fair amount of action that's going on in here. We're just gonna mix all of that together. Feel free to use a bigger bowl if you like. I'm just gonna transfer this steak out of the frying pan that I've got here because I don't wanna char it up too hard on the other side. And that's just gonna get popped into the oven. And that's gonna give us plenty of time to cook our marrow, finish our steak, and have a, a really nice rest period that we can put this back over onto the burners. My steak's been in the oven now for uh, probably 10 minutes, I'd say, eight, ten, eight to 10 minutes. So just a little trick, using the frying pan that you cook, that you seared your steak off, just throw a couple of forks down in it, and then you can take the tray that, you're, that you've had your steak in the oven, and then you can keep it out of the oil and rest it in this tray here. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just. All right, it's probably time to have a little check on our bone marrow. So we definitely don't want to overcook that because what will happen is we'll find that we'll render all the fat out of the marrow. So just bring that down over here and you can see that some of the fat has started to render out of it. So just take a spoon and render some of that fat and oil back over the top. And we'll chuck those back in for a couple of minutes. What we're looking for is to get that. See the edges of this of this garlic here start to caramelise up. We're trying to we're trying to get all of that to caramelise up. That to me is looking bloody good. I've let that rest now for about 15 minutes while we've had a glass of wine and a bit of a chin wag. So that's letting all of that meat and all those fibers that have had such a high intensity impact with heat all start to relax a little bit. And that's what's gonna give us a much, much more tender steak. And all we're going to do here is chuck that on a board. We're gonna take our, our shovel, chive, and caramelized garlic butter, a little bit on there. Our bone marrow is looking on point. So we're just going to you know, sit these up here with our steak. Ooh. Just be careful, these things are insanely hot. And there you have it. We have a beautifully roasted bone marrow with some hard herbs and some fried garlic. We've got a seared steak in tallow with a shervil, chive, and roasted garlic butter. And we've just freshened that up with a little bit of lemon zest. Mm -hmm.